Hello students of the internet. In this video series, we will be talking about all things to do with everybody's favorite writing topic, APA style. It's nobody's favorite writing topic. But if you are not getting your documentation style correct, often you end up accidentally plagiarizing. And as you might have heard, plagiarism is bad. So let's get to work. We should probably start by defining plagiarism, and you probably have a good general sense of the term, basically trying to pass off somebody else's work as your own, some version of that. But there are so many different types of plagiarism, and they could be either intentional or unintentional. So let's go ahead and enumerate them. So let's start with the more obvious plagiarism cases, which are usually the intentional ones. And these can range in severity. So for instance, submitting an entire article that one found on the internet as the paper. That happens pretty rarely, but I actually have had it happen to me. I had a student submit an entire New York Times article as though it were her paper. Obviously very severe form of plagiarism. Other severe forms, using another student's paper and submitting it as one's own, maybe a student who took that class in a previous semester or who submitted a similar type of paper for another class, very severe form of plagiarism. Uh, getting somebody to write your paper for you, maybe you have a cousin who writes really well or uh, paying a company to write the paper for you. This is a form of contract cheating. So these are very severe cases. Now, one also might spot instances of intentional plagiarism in which the entire paper is not plagiarized, but certain chunks of it are. And so a student might take information from an article and insert it into their paper and kind of pass it off as their own ideas. Or they do that type of thing, but from multiple sources. So they take a little bit from here, a little bit from there, and sort of patchwork it together. While that's not the entire paper necessarily, it's still a severe form of plagiarism. And one other form of plagiarism that doesn't get talked about a lot is what we call self-plagiarism. So submitting something that you actually wrote, but that you wrote for another class, a previous semester or that same semester, this is a form of self-plagiarism. You're pretending that this is new work when in reality you had already written that for another course. So these are all intentional forms of plagiarism, and of course, they can carry pretty severe consequences if they are discovered. So none of that. All right, now let's discuss what a lot of students tend to get more tripped up with, which is the more unintentional forms of plagiarism. And the thing is that plagiarizing is a little bit like committing a traffic violation in the sense that it doesn't matter that you didn't know that you weren't supposed to turn right on a red light there. It's not an excuse that you were ignorant on the rule. You're still going to get that traffic ticket. And the same is true with plagiarizing. So let's go over some of the most common ways that students accidentally plagiarize. Number one is that you included the quote, but you forgot to include the citation for that quote. So I see the quote, it's in quotation marks, but I have no idea who the author was, the year, page number, any of that information. That is a form of accidental plagiarism because we need to be able to connect the quote to its author. Another form of accidental plagiarism is if you did include the citation for your quote, but you didn't put the quote in quotation marks, you forgot to use the quotation marks. And this does matter because if the quotation marks aren't there, it's like you're saying that you put it in your own words, when in reality you didn't. You need to demonstrate that those are the original author's exact words. Okay, another form of accidental plagiarism is that you did not include citations for your paraphrases because you didn't think you had to. So a lot of students will sometimes assume that because they put it in their own words, they don't actually have to cite it. But keep in mind that just because you put it in your own words doesn't mean it suddenly became your idea. If you put it in your own words, you don't need the quotation marks, but you are still going to need a citation because that information is still somebody else's intellectual property. Think about it as if you were writing a song and you sampled an old song within your new song, even if it doesn't sound anything like the original song and nobody can even tell that sample is in there, you still have to give credit to the original writers of that older song and if your song makes any money, you have to pay them royalties, right? And if you don't do that, you could be sued. 
So it's the same kind of thing when you are writing. You have to make sure that you give credit to somebody, even if you've kind of like remixed what they said. So another form of accidental plagiarism is when you cite a source only one time in say a whole paragraph, even though you use that source multiple times. There's more than one sentence throughout that paragraph that took information from your source, but you kind of only cited it once in the beginning or once at the end. That's not going to cut it because we need to know every time when you're taking something from somewhere. The last form of unintentional plagiarism is something we already discussed. It's self-plagiarism because a lot of times students don't realize that they're not allowed to use previous work in a new class or even parts of their previous work in a new class. Yes, you are the writer, but if you're submitting old work in a new class, there's no new learning going on, right? So self-plagiarism is a form of plagiarism that you need to be aware of and make sure that you avoid at all costs. There you are. These are some of the most common ways in which people might plagiarize, whether intentionally because they were trying to cheat or because they just made an honest mistake. And I'll leave you with a final thought on this topic. It's never worth it to attempt to plagiarize. There can be very severe consequences for plagiarism, ranging from getting a zero on that assignment to failing the course or even being kicked out of the school. So even though we often undergo a lot of stress and feel a lot of pressure when we're studying potentially full time and maybe also working, we have family concerns and life happens and anybody can find themselves in a situation where they feel tempted to kind of take the easy way out. But the easy way out often ends up being the hardest path because it's much better to maybe get some points knocked off for submitting something late or getting maybe a C on the assignment for not doing a great job with it than to end up getting caught for plagiarism and having a more severe academic consequence and also having to feel that I did something wrong and I got caught for it and I knew it was wrong. So it's just never worth the risk. Be proactive. If you're struggling, reach out to your professor, reach out to the university, see if they have any resources, tutoring, um, student services, different things that can help you kind of get through that struggle and come out the other side without having dealt with being caught for plagiarizing any of your work. So with that in mind, let's jump into talking about all the little details that have to do with APA style for this video series so that we can also make sure that we avoid any of those unintentional types of plagiarism that we talked about. 